Thank you very much again for your presence. Uh, the second study I will present here is uh, numerical investigation of turbulence flow through cooling channels of a PEM fuel cell with metal foam as flow distributor. Uh, I'm Masoud Jairad and uh, here I will say uh, some introduction and then a literature review. We will see the governing equations, then the results and discussion, and finally some concluding remarks. Actually, uh, a fuel cell uh, is a device. They maybe I can say these are the future devices which generate power from hydrogen, yeah, right, generate power for us from hydrogen. Here is a schematic of a fuel cell a stack, but it consists of many stacks together, parallelly, and that's uh, hydrogen comes from one side, we call it anode, and oxygen from the air, maybe, from cathode, hydrogen is um, provided from a hydrogen tank. Yeah. And then the hydrogen ions cross over the, the, the catalysts and uh, the electron goes through a cycle and generates power, electricity. And these ions that cross the uh, catalysts goes and uh, composed with the oxygen of the air and produced water. Yeah. But this mm, process uh, also um, mm, give heat, yeah, some heat, and it's not uh, okay for us. So we want to cool up this system using uh, some cooling channel to remove the heat, eject the heat from the stacks of the fuel cell. And here maybe you can see better the performance of the fuel cell system. Yeah, the hydrogen comes, the ions, positive photons goes through the catalyst, the membrane, photon exchange membrane, we denoted by PEM. And then the electron comes from uh, an electrical circuit and produce electricity. Then the ions uh, compose with oxygen and produce water, okay? Simply work. So the advantages of fuel cell system is its high efficiency, very low pollution. It's silent without moving parts, but there are also some disadvantages uh, about its performance, utilization, and reliability. Its price may be a little still high. Size of the system should be maybe large. And uh, it also needs hydrogen, so we need hydrogen from, from other sources. Uh, it can be used in many applications, such, um, such as transportation systems or portable and non-portable devices. Okay, here also you can see a fuel cell system stack that uh, also a cooling system is explained here. The fuel cell stack is in a circuit. Here is a pump, a cooling coolant tank, a radiator. The system is for the cooling of the fuel cell stack. So the cooling system dionized, need dionized heat exchanger, cooling channels, and pump for the process of cooling of the fuel cell stack. <coughs> what we need, what we um, need from uh, uh, optimal cooling system. The, here are the specifications of an optimal cooling system. 
it should provide consistent and uniform te temperature for us along the uh, fields of the stack. It should provide minimum pressure drop. Uh, so it's good for pumping. If we have lower pressure drop, uh, we need lower power for pumping. And also it should maintain the required system moisture. Uh, yeah, because um, the protons of hydrogen should cross over the PEM and the uh, domain, the space, the area for them should be moisture. Okay, if what happens if the temperature be high? For high temperature, it will damage the cell materials, unsafe performance, increase catalyst particle size, membrane drying, increase membrane resistance, and reduce the performance. These are the disadvantages of being high temperature. And low temperature also reduce the performance and make some butter accumulation inside the fuel cell stack that um, it will also uh, prevent the hydrogen uh, ions to cross the membrane if the water accumulate and fill the spaces in the membrane, the hydrogen and protons cannot cross the membrane. So the temperature should be uniform. Here is a schematic of um, cooling channels of fuel cell. They carry reactant gases and water. They also conduct the electrons and help the cooling process. And the characteristics of a cooling system is gas impermeability, thermal and electrical conductivity, low weight, and corrosion resistance. Here we can see a figure from a metal foam system for um, the membrane, yeah, for the cooling system, sorry. Uh, the idea is to use porous medium uh, to improve the performance of a cooling system in fuel cells. So there are many literatures done previously on press media, using press media for the cooling system in different geometries, not in fuel cells. But I'm not going to explain them, just uh, I can see you here that there's also uh, an experimental work on using metal foam heat exchangers for thermal management of fuel cell systems, but it was a laminar case, laminar flow case. We have also a paper in Journal of Hydrogen Energy with my colleagues and that we also studied uh, using metal foam as coolant flow distributor in the polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell, but that work was also in laminar flow case. So previous studies showed us that using porous media in different geometries leads to a uniform temperature distribution which we need for a fuel cell with an acceptable pressure drop. So as the flow Reynolds number increases to a porous medium, the flow regime can be changed to turbulent. In turbulent flows, the dominant parameters at moment one energy equations are the turbulent ones. With the dominance of turbulent terms, momentum and heat transfer are intensified. And more heat and momentum transfer results in greater uniformity of temperature and also increase the pressure drop. So by increasing the flow velocity through the porous medium means to make the flow turbulent. The temperature distribution can be more uniform in the cooling system of PM fuel cell. Here is also some previous works on, pros, on using porous media in turbulent flows, but not in fuel cells. Okay, the problem profile is using turbulent flow in porous media with different porosity, different pore sizes, and to study the effects of PM fuel cell coolings. <coughs> some assumptions we made here 
we assume, assume that the flow is fully turbulent, the fluid is Newtonian, uh, the flow is incompressible, it's in a steady state, and uh, we use uniform heat flux. The numerical scheme is to discretize the governing equation based on finite volume method uh, using well-known simple algorithm to solve velocity and pressure field coupling using k epsilon approach for turbulent viscosity. And uh, for k epsilon approach, the macroscopic k epsilon turbulence model in post media is obtained by applying the volume averaging operator to the microscopic k epsilon equations inside representative elementary volume denoted by R E V. Here are the governing equations. You can see also the porosity P in this equation for the um, cross media. Continuity, momentum, K and epsilon equations and energy equation. So with the results, we have first year a validation with theoretical results. Uh, also the data are available here in this table. We can see very small differences between our work, numerical study and the theory. So it is acceptable in different Reynolds numbers. I should say that the Reynolds number in first media is defined, defined according to the uh, porosity, according to the pore size. So it's not uh, same as internal or external flows, the values are different. So the flow is turbulent, but um, because it's defined according to the pore size. <coughs> Here is the effect of Reynolds number on pressure drop at different porosities. We can see that as the Reynolds increases, the pressure drop is also increases, but in this case, with this porosity, with, with lower porosity, the increase is uh, very high. Yeah? And it's acceptable because when you uh, reduce the porosity, um, so the pressure the drop. Is the past the part of the wall or is going through? Uh, the flow is passing through the channels, and the channels is fulfilled with the porous medium which is metal foam. Yeah. Okay, here is the effect of Reynolds number on maximum temperature at different porosities. Here also we can see that as the Reynolds number uh, increase in each porosities, the maximum temperature decrease. Here is the effect of Reynolds number on temperature uniformity factor. It's a very important factor for us in fuel cells because we can check the uniformity of temperature, which is very important for us in fuel cells. And we can see that uh, it decreases with the Reynolds number, but at different porosities, uh, with higher porosity, it will be high. Temperature uniformity factor will be higher, and with Lower porosity, it's lower. Here is the effect of porosity and pressure drop at different pore sizes. Yeah, we can see that as the porosity increases, the pressure drop, drop uh, decreases rapidly at both pore sizes. And here is the effect of porosity and maximum temperature also at different pore sizes. Also a little increase we see in maximum temperature as the porosity increases. Here is the effect of porosity and temperature uniformity factor at different pore sizes again. And yeah, as the porosity increases, the temperature unif uniformity factor increase in both pore sizes we studied here. Here is the pressure contour. We can see easily the uniformity of the pressure contour through the cooling channels of the fuel cell and also the temperature contours 
here are become here becomes very uniform through the system of the field source. So some concluding remarks as the Reynolds number increases we showed that the pressure drop increases and the temperature distribution becomes more uniform. As the product increases, the pressure drop is increased and the temperature distribution becomes even more uniform. As the pore size decreases, the pressure drop is increased and the temperature distribution becomes even more uniform. Mm, but uh, here we can see that the pressure drop increases but the uniformity is also increased. One of them is good, but one is not good for us. And finally, after changing the flow regime to turbulent flow, we uh, showed that the trend of improving the temperature uniformity is slowed down. Thank you for your attention. For our case, because we uh, used, we studied the problem numerically, we um, assumed that we have a homogeneous porosity distribution in the metal foam. But uh, normally it's not uniform, yeah. It's made yeah, so the can be, when you are not using it, it's very small, like you can deduct below instead yeah, of Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. So you are using that C. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, never see. There is also a term of Darcy that can be located in the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay, so we have it. What you, what's your suggestion? But uh, yeah, but there is a term in the Navier's equation that the, the Darcy law is, is also included in, in it. Yeah. The term in the Navier's Stokes has also the Darcy law. Yeah. But if you if you only use the Darcy law, you can not study turbulent flow. I think. Yeah. yeah but why you are saying yeah. that? Yeah. Because yeah. if uh, your Reynolds number is basically yeah. you set of yeah, your porosity, porosity yeah. size yeah. is only if the porosity is uh, well structured, if if it's everywhere. Yeah. I but cannot understand yeah. that the True. flow became turbulent. Yeah, but it may happen in some parts it may be laminar and in some parts it may be turbulent, yeah. It's an assumption, but uh, in the literature also and the flow in post media and some of them are turbulent, are assumed to be turbulent according to the uh, size of the pole. Yeah. yeah, but then uh, when they build uh, these uh, combustion cells, usually mm -hmm. these, uh, the channel uh, with yeah. the pores is mm -hmm. uh, always, is a random porosity or is a very small channel uh, with uh, where the flow is in? You understand? Yeah. But you, you talk about a real case, yeah? When a metal foam is used in a cooling channel, we cannot say that the uh, distribution of the pores are uniform along the metal foam. But in a numerical study, we can assume that they are uniform. So uh, according to the size of the pores, and the value of the Reynolds number from the researchers, we can say that the flow is turbulent or laminar. For example, when it exceeds uh, the value of 100 
50, we can say it's turbulent. Yeah. No, but yeah. it's like, okay, you, are the, you, you want to call it a particle flow. Yeah. Okay. So you are the least flow that is going like that, and then is, there is a devolosity because your uh, atom uh, or ion, uh, they, got, they go through and then uh, they are going to interact. So they... No, they no you are talking about the membrane. This, atom this is, is the going, membrane. Huh? This, this is the, what you say is the membrane, yeah? Yeah. But we are not talking about the membrane. We, ta we are talking about the cooling channels. We use metal foam through the cooling channel, uh, not in the membrane. Why the channel that should be followed? Yeah, we use pores to increase the rate of heat transfer, yeah, in the cooling channels. Uh, also, together simultaneously with the turbulent flow, both can increase the rate of heat transfer in cooling channels because we have not a very long distance to uh, transfer the heat between the uh, fluid coolant fluid and also the stack. We used several techniques to increase the rate of heat transfer. One of them is to use force media inside the cooling channels. Another one is to make the flow turbulent, also to increase the rate of heat transfer. Yeah. But here is, yeah. These are the cooling channels I showed here. Okay. here. The so the flow is going, the flow is going through these channels, yeah? Okay, where there, there is a day But the this is the membrane. This is the membrane. Okay, where there, why there is a heating? Why what? Why it is uh, heated? Where there is heat coming from? Heat? Heat. So heat, the lava, the, the, the heat, uh, the sewer. The heat is generated by the fuel cell stacks. You want to put the In, inside inside the membrane, inside the membrane layer, when the hydrogen is divided to protons and electrons, it they generates heat, yeah, yeah. Heat. yeah. So and warm up the membrane. The here, the here, pipe. yeah, inside here. And, then, uh, and, this, uh, and these cooling channels are used, these channels, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, okay. to no, cool, yeah, the yeah, heat, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, hot air and the yeah flow exactly. Which is the size of this uh, channel? Sign? Sign in the uh, podcast. The size the of, size of channels. Channel. They are mm, mm, less than five centimeters, maybe. Five inch? Yeah. Maybe less. So the yeah. Reynolds number is around, uh, you said, the 1,000? But but uh, we, do, uh, we don't talk about the uh, Reynolds number through the channels because we have metal foam inside them. We cannot see here. Yeah, but the way yeah. you don't put the rafts are here, here, inside them, uh, we use metal foams. Yeah? And the flow goes through the metal foams inside these channels. Yeah? So the size of pores are important to determine the value of Reynolds number to say that the flow is laminar or true. Yeah, but if you want to increase the base transfer, yeah. you can put the uh, rough wall on the side of this uh, square channel. Yeah. Only in the, because instead that you are going to have a, a very big uh, pressure mm -hmm. drop, no? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, colleague. Yeah. Now uh, yeah. I have to uh, uh, finish because uh, the next uh, presentation will be shortly, uh, thank you very much, but I think it's some kind of discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, we, have a, we have a next section. No. Thank you very much thank once you. more. Yeah.